Hello, and welcome to a playthrough of Mortal Shell on PS5. This is the enhanced edition, not the original PS4. So it's got shiny 4K textures, um, all sorts of upgrades like that. Doesn't have the Rotten, Rotten Autumn pack yet, which is like an add-on, but uh, when that becomes available, I'll enable that. Uh, that just gives you like skin packs for the characters and things, so we'll see how to get those when we can. Um, this video will be the tutorial area, so this one's going to be quite short and hopefully we'll beat the boss of this area. You do get an extra item if you do that, so we'll be trying to. So we are what's known as a foundling by one of the characters when we meet them, and we've just woken up, well, wherever we are, and we don't know why we've woken up or, or anything else really. Let's have a look around. So, rather than shields and things like that, which we might see in Dark Souls, this has a mechanic called Harden, and as it says, you've inherited the ability to harden your body. Hardening prevents harm from attacks, but is broken quickly upon taking physical damage. So the way it works is it will shield impact from one attack or multiple within a certain window. So when you get hit, it fades off quite quickly, you've got like half a second or so. Like that. You slightly harden when you dodge as well, so you do get a bit of a vulnerability then. So he's our little tutorial friend, who will pop up now and again. And he's called Hadern, which is obviously a play on Harden. So we've got our first weapon, the Hallowed Sword. This is the balanced weapon, I would say. Um, those were all light attacks, so R1 does a three hit combo like that. We do R2, we do a jab, we can do another and a third. You can mix and match. You can also, which we'll get towards in this next section, harden while attacking. So, harden while attacking. You may harden in most situations, even while attacking. Experiment with hardening at different times, so you can use that as a way of you might have messed up an attack and it's going to miss. Uh, that might leave you open, so you could just harden midway through. The attack is still in progress, so you could then wait, let an enemy attack and then it will hit them if you stop hardening. So let's have a look. So we don't have health at this point, so it doesn't matter that we're going to get hit a few times, we just want to get through the attacks. And what it does on the dual sets, um, when you harden is recharging, so I'll just harden. Um, that bar in the bottom left is my meter, it takes about 5 seconds to come back. And when I, if I try before it's actually returned, the dual sense trigger vibrates and resists, which is quite cool. So it's a bit of a cue there that you can't do it yet. And there he goes. There's three items to pick up in here. You don't have to get them. Well, one of them you'll stumble across, but there's two more. And it's this mortal token. Uh, you can see that... If I can get the button right. The inventory and ga the gameplay hasn't paused yet. So it's like Dark Souls, I'm vulnerable if there's enemies nearby. Um, when you get items you don't know what they do, which is kind of a <laughs> poison chalice element. So we'd have to use this ten times to get the full knowledge of the item, and when we do that it will reveal an additional effect. Um, but what this item does, which I won't use unless I need to, if I use it the next time I harden and get struck by an attack it will heal me. And there's another one. never remember where the other one is, so let's just have a little look. I think it's over here. Yes. So that's all three. So the only other item we can get in here is if we manage to beat the boss. And here he is, the guy who's been training us so far. He's got a lot of health, 
There's an easy way to defeat him, which I'm going to use. It's time consuming, but it's the, the way to do it without dying. Is get him to harden, which he will do on his five second cooldown. Or maybe a little longer. Back off, run at him as he attacks, and do an R2. And then you get one hit in, and then I'll show you the follow up next time. Back off, run, overhead, harden, then hit him twice, and just get out of the way. And it's just rinse and repeat. Like I say, it takes a while, but it's a surefire way to get him down. If you go for a third hit there, he will deck you in the face. take a few hits in the tutorial but once we're out of the tutorial this form that we're in only takes one hit and is dead so something to be aware of never defeated him without getting hit so let's see if we can break that cycle Probably not. You usually just get a bit overconfident by the end. So the chain of attacks I'm doing there is R1, R2. Um, I think it takes too long to do two R2s to him. Oh! There we go. That was different. Still not done it with full health. If he gets enough hits on you as well, he'll build up another stat that we don't have yet, um, called Resolve, and that will enable him to do a very, very damaging attack. Which you don't want, because it'll pretty much kill you in one go. But he has to get three or four hits in, in in a row to do that. You can always do the back step by just pressing circle to get away from his attacks as well. Two more, we should be done. So it very briefly flashed up then, but we got a glimpse of Reverie there, and glimpses of one of the currencies, which I'll talk about in a sec. And we are lunch. Like I said, we don't know what's going on at this point, so I'm not going to just explain everything. I'll do what I know as we go, which <laughs> isn't a great deal. So Fulgrim, a tower hums, where a muted dweller ruminates his fate. So we are about to enter Fulgrim. We've just been deposited here somehow by that giant uh, fish thing. We've kept our sword, which is good. And there's nothing else in here.
think the devs did this on purpose. They put this ridiculously long tunnel here. Um, I did watch a lot of live streams and things before this came out. So I was really interested in it and they did say that they, they made it a bit too long on purpose so that people would be like, is this ever going to end? There's always that little animation when you crawl out of um, a little tunnel because there are some in this area. And I think you're a bit vulnerable when that happens so you just need to be careful that you don't pop out when there's an enemy there. But what happened here? That looks like a beastie that got ripped open. That was something screaming. And these people seem to be turned to stone, or at least carved statues, weirdly. That one doesn't look very happy. Nice. Uh, these symbols are checkpoints, um, so the game will do like an autosave when you go past those. There's not that many. Big tip here. Don't just go this way. What's happening to me now is the controller's vibrating like a heartbeat, going boom, 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 boom. If I just go that way, that's if I want to complete the game without shells, really. Let's find out what a shell is. Here's the first one. So we have a unique ability whereby we can possess what are called shells, which are basically corpses of forgotten hero. Well, heroes might be the wrong word, forgotten people. <laughs> um, so we know nothing about this at the moment, but we will be able to learn by leveling up this shell or choosing a different one. So they're kind of like classes. Um, you don't get skill points in this game. There's no like, I'm going to put points in strength, etc. So here we are in Fulgrim. Um, you just buy skills that relate to that class. And this one revolves more around Harden and improving that capability. There's a lot of these around that say Sense Instinct. Um, so let's touch this one and it'll give us a glimpse of where to go. So that looked like our boy Haddon going into a tower, so I think we should follow. So it is still um, light on the law in terms of what's in your face, like a Dark Souls game, but it does give you these little hints which are really useful considering... we don't really know what's going on. So that was kind of in case we didn't do that sense instinct I think. It's kind of like still look you need to go there so make sure you do. So you can see my stamina bar and health bar at the bottom. So green is stamina which refills when you're not attacking. The usual stuff. Um, and red is my health. Next to the Harden meter, there's a white light. Um, if I my health gets to zero, I will be ejected from this shell, which I'm not going to show you, but I'm sure it'll happen, so we'll get to that. Um, and I will have a few seconds to get back into the shell before the enemies are able to move again. Whilst I'm out of the shell, I just one hit and die. So it's just a way to kind of carry on playing so that you're not instantly dead and punished. A nice little example of harden there. And again. And when you do harden, your stamina recharges as well. So that's another tactical way to use it. I'm just going to kill the enemies in this little section just to get some of the level up currency, which I will explain in a minute. So 
So in the bottom right you can see there's a counter going up and there's actually two of them. So the one that says 220, that's a currency called TAR, T-A-R. And it's something that's been extracted from something called the Nectar. Uh, and it's actually a currency that you can use to buy things, because there is a single merchant. Uh, or you can level up with it. Love the big growl there in the distance. Uh, so when you're leveling up there's two currencies which is why there's two numbers there. Tar is something that is universal so if I get another shell that shell has access to all the tar that this one does. If I acquire a glimpse that is unique to this shell so you need to really you need to pick a shell and then max it out um, by buying all its abilities and the reason for that is once you do that you can then buy an item that lets you teleport between this character's locations at will. So wherever you are you can just use the item and pick a location. So that's the incentive to fully level up one shell. You don't have to do that but you're going to be running. There's no fast travel otherwise. So let's wake her up. Pray what wayward spirit beckons. I shall name you family and you may call me Sester Janessa. You're uninitiated in the Raphaid's mysteries. I see. What a curiosity you are. Wearing a man like a shell. You've awakened him, but you know nothing of him yet. Fetch me one of his mementos, and some tar too, and I'm sure we can stir up some recollections. Of course, first you must find his name. So whenever we talk to her we have this option, which is a sip the divine tar. And that brings up our ability wheel. So there's one per sh uh, shell, but we can't see anything at the moment. As she just said, we have to find his name first. Uh, so when we do that, the middle circle will fill up, and then it will tell us the shell's name and give us a little bit of lore. And you get lore up through each one, but then the first time it will reveal what all those others do. Um, but I will be choosing a different character. I usually go with Solomon. Um, I'm tempted by one called Eridrim this time, but I don't know if it'll suit my playstyle, so I'll have a think. We will be acquiring them all, but uh, I'll have a think. So, I did say this would be a short video, so we're going to leave this one here, and next time we'll come back, tour this little bit, which is our hub, and then we will go and do a bit of shopping. So we want to get another shell, the weapon we want to use in the game because I don't want to use this one and then we'll start to actually chip away at the game's content so thank you very much for watching and just to play us out let's have a little bit of music she's nodding but we're not that good are we we'll get better